Hey guys, so how to gain clients in your bookkeeping business, even if you're an introvert, and even if talking to people gives you micro or even macro anxiety. So personal background. So for me, I so this might be surprising, but I am naturally an M an ambivert. Okay. That means I can be extroverted sometimes, I can be introverted sometimes. Now, I used to be super, super, super outgoing, but over time it's become a little bit more introverted. So like I've been working based with myself. It actually takes me a little bit of time. Like, for example, I do a lot of like damn social and stuff like that. But even for like the first like five, 10 minutes, it takes me a second to be able to like, kind of like look at people the same way, interact with people the same way, because I'm just like all day just thinking about numbers and just thinking about moving and like growing and stuff. So it can actually be a little bit challenging to a certain degree to kind of turn off that aspect of my mind and be able to go and like have like really good conversations. So I also prefer to have like small, close knit circles, um, even spending time alone. Like one thing that I do very, very routinely is I will actually go and like sit in my car in random parking lots and like write on my journal. Right. So it's actually very, very or my e-journal, my tablet thing, right? So it's actually very interesting to kind of think about that change over time. Because uh, I used to be like, you know, I always wanted to go out, I always wanted to talk, I always wanted to like network, I always wanted to go be around people. And now it's just kind of like, you know, I talk to people a lot. I don't really necessarily need to talk to more people after I get out of work kind of thing. So next thing, so some struggles for for people who are like also introverts or ambiverts. So remember, an, an ambivert is someone that displays characteristics of both. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm an extrovert or an introvert. I personally don't really believe in introversion versus extroversion the way most people do. Most people think like they're like, I'm an introvert, so I don't talk to people. It's not necessarily that you don't talk to people. It's that it gives you anxiety from interactions as well as uh, phone calls. It can make you feel drained. It's also extrovert versus introvert. It's like, when, where do you get your energy from? Some people who are extroverts get energy when they go and talk to more people introverts tend to get more energy when they're basically by themselves like they recharge so they can go and like put out information they can go talk to people it's just they feel very drained when it comes to it um like so and also like dislike for small talk and in-person meetings so some people have like reluctance to set up uh, meetings due to having anxiety right so it's like it, it's um it's kind of tough because like this business model it is good for introverts if the introvert can kind of understand like that there is a reason for talking to a person to go and get the client. So a lot of people are like, okay, well, you know, since I'm an introvert, I'm just going to go and like, you know, get the get the bookkeeping client to do the bookkeeping work. So I don't have to talk to anybody. But it's like you technically have to talk to people to get the client, right? I mean, so so it's like you have to be able to kind of just like learn how to kind of get some confidence, build up your endurance for just a one-hour conversation or even – a consultation call for me from 15 minutes to like 45 minutes long. So just like being able to kind of just build up your energy tolerance to have that one conversation a week that could potentially grow your business. You know what I mean? So it's like if you can really just handle having one to two consultation calls a week for up to like an hour each, then you'll be able to grow the business even if you're an introvert. Um, yeah. And this like one thing can really help with introversion, too, is like really overcoming a lot of anxiety because you can be introverted. But if you like remove that social anxiety as well and you have more confidence in yourself and it helps you build that tolerance of talking to people a little bit longer. Uh, so really just kind of like believing in the value of your contributions to the conversation. For me, sometimes like if I feel like uh, I don't really know anybody or I'm not going to add value to this thing, it's like, why am I even going to say anything? So I'll just like sit there, just kind of like quietly, just like chill and like relax. Right. So. But once I kind of know, okay, so I understand some people here. These people are kind of cool. Okay, they talk about stuff that's similar to what I want to talk about. Okay, then I'm good. I can just talk and do whatever I want, whatever I want to say, you know? So it just kind of depends on, on you. Next thing. So you can actually use your introversion as a strength. So independence, good listening skills, and meaningful relationships are very, very important when it comes to business. So independence to be able to like figure stuff out on your own. If you're always kind of dependent on someone to tell you what to do or you have to interact with someone in order to be able to do your job or to be able to like, you know, make money or whatever, it's going to be very hard for you to really succeed in business. Also, when you're trying to do your consultation calls, one thing that can help you save energy is by becoming a good listener. Generally, if you're introverted, you're going to be a good listener. So it does make it a little bit easier for you to be able to save your energy and you have the other person who might be an extrovert feel 
very heard, very listened to, and they really would like to talk to you on a more, um, they'd like to work with you on a more consistent basis because you made them feel heard in a way that most people wouldn't be listening to them. Because most people who are also extroverted would want to talk the entire time that they're together. Let me move this and kind of like put my light on together. Cool. Next thing. So also you can use extroversion by focusing on deep connections rather than having a bunch of superficial ones. So one thing about being an extrovert is that if you get your, if you are good talking to like small groups or like one-on-one -on -one kind of scenarios, this is amazing because that's what a consultation call is, right? You're only talking like one, maybe two people max, right? Because they might have like a business partner, but that's pretty, that doesn't happen a lot. Usually talking like one owner. So it just works very, very, um, very well. Next, like using independence and like focused work as a selling point. So since you are an introvert, you can literally tell them like, hey, I get like into these very, very deep kind of like work focuses. And like, it just, it just makes it super easy. And I'm pretty independent. So I'm not gonna be like asking a million questions. It just kind of works, right? So you have to like, part of business is using what you have in order to get to that next level. So let's say that you don't have an office. Okay, use that to your benefit. Just say I'm virtual. So you never have to see me in your office. Okay, if you only have a couple hours to work. Yes, I'm going to put my full focus on you during those hours I work. If maybe you, your kids go to sleep early, okay, cool, I'm going to do all the work in the night so I'm out of your hair during the day. If you don't have a lot of money from ads, then you just use social media, which is free. You know what I mean? So it's like whatever you have, use that as a strength. Every perceived weakness can be flipped around to being a strength, which you then use to go and get to what you want in this life. Next thing, so you can actually carry a conversation without wasting a lot of energy by being conversational. So you like what is it? Sorry, being conversational with questions. So at networking events, what I do at networking events, if I don't want to talk, I just go up to someone and I ask them one question and they just start spewing at the mouth for the next like 10 minutes. And then as soon as that conversation over, I go to the next one. And I do the same thing. So it looks like I'm very like I know a lot of people. It looks like I'm I'm very social interactive. So people are wanting to talk to me and want to be friendly, but I'm not wasting much energy. Um, and by asking meaningful conversations, it actually starts, you find like places of common interest. And like once I kind of find that common interest and stuff I really like talking about, then actually like engaging in those conversations becomes more fun. And you can really avoid a lot of awkward silences by just steering your questions towards conversations that are interesting to both of you. That way, when they stop talking, you can talk. When you stop talking, they can talk. So it's like a back and forth kind of carrying of the conversation. Next thing. So this is also a way to kind of build your confidence in public situations, as well as just build your confidence in general so that you lose less energy when you go and talk to people. So business card strategy. Okay. And this is kind of one of those, this is a very unique piece of advice. Usually I tell people like, you don't have to build business cards in the beginning, right? Because I'm focused on getting clients. But if it's really to overcome your anxiety, this is part of getting clients. It's the, when I say business card strategy, it's not going to necessarily get you clients. It can, but it's not, it's not designed to get you clients. It's designed to be a pretty fun exercise that helps you get out of your own shell and out of your own place. So every single time that you go to a location, let's say you go to like a restaurant or let's say that you go to um, a bookstore or whatever, leave a business card. See if like they have a spot for you to put business cards and see if you can put your business cards there or just leave like one business card like on a table or just some random place, right? And just, just start getting used to that. One thing you can do is like just start approaching like the business owners asking like, hey, if you can display your business cards. In some cases, they might have a fee. If they have a fee, it's probably, I don't know exactly how much it is. I don't know which location you're going to go to, but some places can be like pretty expensive, like maybe like $5 or whatever to leave your business cards, whatever, right? But a lot of small businesses want to support each other. So that's something that you can do um, to kind of just like be there and like help it out. I also like leaving like on the back of the car, like maybe like a brief introduction of what you do, depending like how good your card is. I don't know how good your card is. So that's, that's just one thing. Um, but yeah, when I, when I was first getting started in business, I would actually go to places where I knew people had to be social and practice my social skills. I know it sounds crazy. Like, what do you mean? So I would literally go to the mall, like to the mall. And this is like back, back when I was like in college. I would go to the mall and I would like put a timer, 30 minutes. In the mall, I had to go and talk to the people that owned, like that were like the, the cashiers or whatever, just talk to them like three, five minutes, right? And like some other advice, so I, so I wouldn't buy stuff. It just really depended. But it's just to kind of get out of my shell, just to start talking and just to start like learning how to interact with people in a much easier way, right? So like nowadays, it seems like, okay, Bryce, you've always been, you've always been like, um, you know, extrovert and you love talking and you have a thousand videos online. It's like, well, yeah, but it didn't just start like that. Like 
the only reason I can film videos on live is I did this coaching program by this one guy. And the first thing he made me do was shoot 300 videos, 300 videos. Like he didn't give me a time frame, just make 300 videos. I was like, what the heck? He didn't give me any instruction. I tried to get that number out there. So yeah, very, very interesting kind of, uh, kind of thing. But that's why making videos, like it is super easy for me to make videos. Um, depending on like when you see this video, like I might've actually made this video in the past. I started um, bulk making videos. So like, I'll talk about a bunch of different things. I'll make, I'll prepare like a bunch of different notes and I'll just take like an hour. I'll just like blast out like three different videos, like dr three drastically different videos in a row um, around this kind of stuff. So it's just like, it just works so well. That skill set that I had to build. So you never just, you never just start out with stuff. You have to develop this stuff and it's just a muscle. Like once you have that muscle, it's good. Like, if I could do nothing else except for YouTube, like this would be what I do full time. Like, 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 well, when I say full time, like outside of like my business, you know what I mean? So in terms of like marketing, like you never see me on Facebook, you never see me anywhere else. Like the only thing that I talk about, like when it comes to like teaching people accounting and bookkeeping skill sets is just on YouTube. So I think I'm probably about a year and a half, two years away from being able to do that. So we'll see. Um, and it's not that, you know, you know, it's just because like my other channels make so much money, it just doesn't make sense to kind of turn them off. But if it was completely up to me and I, you know, didn't really care that much about making money anymore, <laughs> which I'm not that far away from that point, but I'm still kind of like have a, a certain goal I'm trying to hit savings wise. So, you know, just one of those things. As soon as that happens, I will not be doing Facebook and not be doing LinkedIn um, for the mentorship program, right? For the accounting firm, I'm still going to use LinkedIn because that's the best platform to go and get accounting clients. But just in general, like I just, I love shooting these videos for you, right? It's just, it's just really great. Next thing, um, let's talk about leveraging the internet. So this is also an easier place for like introverts, right? Because all because I, some of my students that I purpose said like they love the LinkedIn that we teach, like the way we teach how to use LinkedIn. Call is that you typing on your computer, you're not talking or anything. It's just like, boom, okay, I don't have to go talk to people. I don't have to face rejection. It's just like some random computer screen. It's like, it's crazy. Right. So you can use LinkedIn, Facebook, Alignable and Thumbtack for outreach. Right. So you engage people, interact with your posts. Now, I like using these social media platforms because it just gives you unlimited access to talk to people who you want to. It just it just works so well. It just it's so it's so simple to be able to go and like build these relationships. And then you can also see who interacts with your posts. You can see who interacts with you. You can see who's checked out your profile in the last X, Y, Z days. And you can start building relationships with these people. And like, we give you like different messenger scripts. If you don't know what to say, like in our in our marketing and mentorship program, like we teach you what to say um, to grow the business and to get people to actually want to work with you. Also, you can start being like assertive, but not pushy, right? So we never want to like be pushy. We just want to be able to kind of let people kind of know what we do. And then just like being really good. Some easy ways you can kind of get some online engagement is like anytime you make a post, if anyone like likes your post, just go and reach out and just thank them for engaging with their post. Ask them like what they found meaningful about it, or, like what they kind of learn from the post. And then when they make a post, go and like do the same thing. Like their post and talk to them about the post. Like what inspired you to write that? That's awesome. Like, you know, what kind of led to you doing that? Oh, that's awesome. How did that end up turning out for you? compliment and just ask about their profile maybe they like had a cool job that you never heard of like so hey how'd you get into that like like what does that kind of mean what does that look like right etc cetera, etc cetera. just be interested in people and then we'll be interested back in you and then after a while you can just like start asking about like their bookkeeping needs like in a very subtle way that's just not pushy right so mm -hmm. let me pause one second my other camera just ran out of space Sorry about that, guys. My 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 other camera. I had a memory core memory card inside of it, and it just like ran out of memory. Sorry about that. Uh, I did not think to check the memory on that one because it's been you know moving and shaking for a little while. So just one of those things. But yes. Yeah, so final thoughts. Really embracing your introverted nature. Just using online tools and strategic conversations to really help grow your business in a way that does not drain you so you can do it over the long term. Because if you can't do it for a long period of time, it doesn't make sense to even do it for a short period of time. I'm just being honest with you um, when you're kind of doing this stuff. Because it's just all this stuff has compound interest. So if you can't take the time to like build it over time, it's just not going to work for you. Also, confidence and meaningful relationships are key when starting a business. So 
hopefully if you want some help growing your business and like maybe you've been trying to grow your business, but it's just not quite going the way that you wanted it to or the way that you had planned in the beginning, right? Maybe you haven't even gotten started yet. It's just like all the different things that are in front of you are just very overwhelming. Either way, if you want a proven roadmap to be able to grow your business and reach your goals, go ahead and click the link inside the description, either above below the video to book a call, see if I can help you inside of our mentorship program, okay? Um, schedule a call. On the call, we're just we're basically going to say, like, you know, where are you right now? Where do you want to go? And if I think I can help you out, I'll just let you know. We can just move forward right then and there, okay? So I'll talk to you soon. Have a good rest of your day.